Hey guys, so this is the part two of my video uh, regarding the Elegoo Saturn II and today we're going to be opening up the Mercury XS bundle. It's the wash and care machine and I am very excited because I never had a wash and care. I've had a resin. <laughs> I've had a resin printer for two years and I've never had a wash and care bundle. This is because I was using like my nail curing station and just a bucket for alcohol and i'm done being cheap it's time to invest in something nice this is what it looks like and i am pretty pumped to see what's inside all right So from the looks of it, I just see a base and I see a lid, um, but it's probably set up like the Elegoo Saturn where all like the goodies were inside. So let's see what we got here. So we have the little pamphlet. Looks like it comes with a main body, curing light. So the time settings is zero to 30 minutes. It has a knob and button control, which is kind of cool. And for models with a diameter less than or equal to 30 millimeters, it's recommended to clean the model for one minute. And if the surface of the model is complex, it's recommended to increase the cleaning time appropriately. Okay. For curing with a diameter less or equal to 30 millimeters, it's recommended to cure the model for two minutes. And if the surface of the model is complex, you change that accordingly. I didn't know it was such little time. Typically with standard Elegoo resins, I've been curing uh, like at work, for example, for about 10 to 15 minutes. So this is good to know. However, I probably still will cure it at 10 because I just want to make sure that it's okay. As you can see here, you can fit a whole Saturn S in there um, or two Mars 2 Pro build platforms so that's pretty cool it doesn't say the Saturn 2 and I know the build volume is bigger so I don't know if it will fit directly in the vat but either way I probably won't do that anyway I'll probably just prop the print off the bed and then pop it in the in the in the tray so let's get going here like the turntable. This is actually quite nice. Looks like the UV lamps go in there. Aside from this, we have the lid and I believe the wash basket. So let's prop this out. This is just like a container for food. Uh, so we do have a gallon of alcohol, but I'm not sure if we need to fill it up or what. I'm not gonna print massive stuff, so I don't think I need to put a lot right away. So on the bottom here, it looks like there's a little propeller that turns and that probably is used to circulate the water or the alcohol that you put in here. Okay, we have some goodies in here. Looks like we have a bunch of tiny screws and an Allen key. This looks like the power, so I'm just gonna put this aside. One of our panels. Here's the panel for the wash. It's much smaller than the cure. So I believe that just goes like this. And so you can put your platforms in there and then you can like lift this up after. So let's install the light panels.
There we go. I love how it has a handheld UV lamp. I find that this is such a brilliant feature. And for those who don't know what it's prominently used for, I personally love to drop my models, not on purpose, but accidentally. Um, and this little UV flashlight that it comes with allows you to just dabble a little bit of resin onto your part and then you can literally fuse it together instantly and this is pretty high powered i did try this at work and i loved it so i definitely recommend getting this kit because this is such a nice added feature i didn't know it came with this until after the fact also comes with some uv safety goggles which is a really nice added touch i love how involved elegu is with their safety and how much they care uh, and adding these little small things that really help along the way Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This week I'm gonna be talking about post-processing your resin prints. And I personally love resin printing. I love the surface quality. I love what you get from it. But one thing about resin printing is that it stinks. There's a lot of post-processing, well, sort of. And it's just kind of a pain to deal with because it's messy. I am gonna show you my strategy for keeping a clean environment, but also successfully post-processing your models. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. And again, if you are interested in seeing more content and behind the scenes, please consider signing up for my Patreon. I am posting more videos and I'm trying to grow a little community of people who love to print. So I'm gonna be posting STLs and different stuff like that. So keep an eye out and also yeah consider following okay so as you can see back here I got the mercury bundle set and I've used it for the last couple of weeks and I absolutely love it I love the value of it I love what comes with it for the price point I think I paid around two hundred and eighty dollars maybe a little less than that. I'm gonna show you how I post process my resin print and give you an idea of what to do in certain situations. So this is what the wash station looks like. You can just pop off the top here. I'm not gonna do it because the alcohol does stink, uh, but there is a little propeller on the bottom that does circulate the alcohol to help you clean your print. And also you would just this isn't attached to power right now, but you can just press and hold the base and then you can dial in the time and you can do, I believe, from zero to 30 minutes. Uh, for standard Elegoo resin, it only requires, I believe, five to 10 minutes of washing. And, and then after this process, I'll just leave the print out to evaporate any residual alcohol. And this will take probably around half an hour. If you do have a little air compressor, or air blower thingy, you can just dry off your prints uh, within like seconds. But I don't have one, so I'll just let it air dry for a bit. So let's set the station up and get going. Before that, I did forget to mention, you're gonna need these two things and these are non-negotiables. You need PPE. This includes my powder-free nitrile gloves. I got these off Amazon. Overpriced, unfortunately, but you can find them locally. Actually, right now, and especially since the pandemic, PPE has been like, extremely expensive so maybe you have better luck than me but i don't know this is actually the mask that came with the elegoo came with two i believe one thing that i don't have at the moment that i wish i did was paper towel i ran out unfortunately but that really helps keep your table space and everything super clean and tidy so um unfortunately i don't have a substitute at the moment but i'm going to use just a sheet of uh a4 paper just keep it simple so i'm gonna go grab that but clearly i did not come prepared so i'm gonna get my gloves on i've been trying so hard not to get the uh the top of the printer dirty. I've been really keeping my eye out on any resin splashes and stuff like that. So yeah, it's looking good so far, but we'll see in like a year. This is what the prints look like. And if you could guess, they are shells. 
and these are actually 3D scanned from my shelves from the Bahamas. So I did manage to print them and uh, I'm, I'm, so these are kind of like replicas and um, I don't have them on me right now, but I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side representation. And yeah, we're gonna post-process them and see the final result. This is the scraper that came with the Elegoo. You could just take the scraper and go under the raft and try to pop it off. But if I do it here, it's gonna fly somewhere, so I'm gonna just relocate. As you can see here, the print looks good. I did actually cut the bottom so there's a flat surface because I wanted to make earrings, uh, but obviously they are too big. These are the scaled up version and the next round I'm going to actually do small. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make earrings from these prints. Uh, so yeah, but that's next week. This week is the post-processing. I love standard resin because they just kind of come off. And you want to be more vigilant with overhangs and like thin pieces but this is just on a flat surface so that just popped off but you can use the pliers that come with the uh, printer this does have a thin wall so i'm gonna be careful but like just like that it comes off and since it has a flat bottom i'm not worried about this because i'm just gonna sand it this one might be a little bit more difficult just because there's a lot of supports, but let's try it out. So I got like half of it. Oh no! Beauty! Okay, so these are the two models. I just swapped the spot with the printers because it's just more convenient to have them on the table here. This is the wash and this is the cure. So you just press the button here. I'll make that be. Bin here can actually take 7,000 ml or 7 liters of alcohol. I do recommend getting a large gallon or two of alcohol to have because it does evaporate over time. So it is good to have and keep on hand if you need it, especially if you're resin printing on a regular basis. So I got my glove on again because we're just going to pop the top open and we're going to wash our model for five minutes. We have our first one over here. I'm gonna plop that in there. And our very small shell. Close the top and press the button. And as you can see, I have two silicone ripper mats and I find them so helpful to clean up afterwards. Um, I don't wanna damage any tables or anything like that. So I find that this is the best. But I'll just take out the prints, lay them down. Overall, the prints are so beautiful. This one is probably my favorite. It's just so pretty. So this is the little torch that comes with the washing cure bundle over here. And you just plug it in on the side of the cure and this will illuminate a UV light. And this is perfect if you have a breakage or you wanna cure, let's say you hollow your model, you could stick this up, the, up your model and cure the inside of your print, which is amazing because I've had a couple of situations where my print actually explodes because trapped resin inside of the print and then um, it sits there and then just combust the model, which is kind of scary. But yeah, so I'll show you how to fix this specific print, because as you can see, there is a hole. So obviously that wall was too thin and it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of failed there. I'll plug this in right on the side. And I'm gonna turn the cure station on. And you can see there's a little power on button over here and a UV light is illuminating, which is super cool. I use AK Space Gray Resin, so I'm just going to do this in the cleanest way possible, but I'm gonna pour some into the lid, right there, and get a Q-tip. So the main reason why I'm using a Q-tip is just so I can discard of it afterwards. There's no specific 
reason besides that. This is still an uncured model, so I want to make sure I have gloves on both hands when handling it. So I have the print here. As you can see, they're really whole. I'm going to take my Q-tip, dab it into the resin, and just kind of cover the hole as much as possible. And this might be fairly difficult. I might have to build it up a little bit more, but it's worth a shot. Illuminate the UV where I need to, and we can do it on the other side as well. And it only needs a couple of seconds to cure, so we can turn that right off and start on our second layer. There we go. And again, we can sand the surface down, so that is no big issue. As you can see, it's a little bit raised from the other portions. And not gonna lie, this is quite powerful for being a little torch. It is actually very, very well done. And if you don't have the luxury of this add-on from the Mercury bundle set, you can just purchase this on Amazon and I'll link that in the description. And then I'm just gonna put one more layer just to kind of Pop it off, finish it, there we go. So I didn't necessarily have to do that. I, I just wanted to show you an application of the little torch, but um, yeah, a little bit seep through here and it's gonna be a little bit more shinier than the rest of the base, but it's okay. We can also send that down. The next step here is to cure. So we're just gonna lift up the lid, place our models over here on the little turntable, close the lid, and then I'm just gonna set the time for 10 minutes, and then that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's video. I hope you like the final product. I am super happy with how it turned out. But yeah, there you go. Beautiful, right?